Well, Postgres SQL databases are easy to set up, easy to directly talk to, they're easy to query and insert stuff directly from a REPL, but let's have a look at how we tackle queries that return data. This is a brand new REPL, so once again, you're gonna to have to go and create a connection to a database. So grab that Postgres SQL tab, create your database, use your pinned SQL commands to create your user's data and add your data to it. Once again, I need to do my basic connections. So I need to import my Psycop G2 and OS libraries. This time I'm gonna build a command line login system. I'm gonna put a while true loop in, ask for the username, and once again, use get pass to ask for their password, just once this time. I'm not gonna ask for anything else because that should be more than enough. I'm then gonna add my cursor and I'm gonna execute a select query. At this point, we'll start very, very simply. So I'll just start by checking to make sure that a user exists with this value. Now we need then to get the results from that query. We do this with cursor.fetch all, which pulls all results back. We can then use a loop to print those out just to show you that it works. And you'll see that it has, but it's printing out the entire contents of the database row, which is probably not what we want, especially as we haven't yet put in the capacity to check the password as well. So let's add that to the query. And it's as simple as add password equals. We use our percent %s again as a placeholder and we add in the password user variable. Let's just check that works. So when I put in the correct password, it loads. When I put in the incorrect password, I get nothing. So we've made it much more secure. Let's look at printing out something a bit more useful. First of all, in most databases where I'm doing a login, I don't need to actually pull the data back to be meaningful. I can just check that there's at least one result. If there's at least one result, that means I've matched my user and password combo in the database. So what I'll do here using the len command, I'll say user found and I'll break. In this case, if I put the wrong password in then I go back into the loop, but if I put the right password in, it tells me the user's found and carries on. So the steps of querying are very, very simple. And of course, once again, you can use Ghostwriter to write those select queries for you, which saves you a massive amount of time. You can also go as far as printing more information in the user found by accessing the value of result. Result is a list of all the results. In a user table, it's likely to be the first result that's gonna be correct. So I'm gonna look at result index zero, the first result, and look at index two inside that result, which should be their email address. Using that will allow me to print it out on the screen and say hello to the user in a more professional way. Your challenge now is to go and grab the Flask code from the tutorial pane. This is a working version of the signup system, but with a login page as well. I'd like you to create the login page. It should use a very, very similar query to forward the user to a page that simply says hello to them with their email address. This of course could be customized later on to have a specific page unique to that user, but it allows you to build much more robust and complex data storage than you would with a simple authorization or login method. Postgres SQL gives you full featured capabilities that you wouldn't get anywhere else. So we can connect the database. We can perform queries directly in the browser. We can insert and change data and we can select and search through the results to check that something's happened. Let's have a look at a real relational database system next by using multiple tables.